Okay, hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Mushida. I am the co-founder of Love and Respect Transform Holdings here in Kuala Lumpur. I am also um, have a business in Singapore. We have a one help one model. Every mentoring, coaching, uh, and membership into our platform also contributes to the mindset and skill set of refugees here in Kuala Lumpur. So we believe that business is a channel for good and our profits is run with purpose. Okay. So today we have a very special guest. I'd love for all of you to meet her. And I've known her for quite some time right, right now, right? <laughs> Marilyn? Yeah, I'd like you all to meet Marilyn Ramos Velasco. And she is the founder of Customized Training Solutions um, based in Singapore. Okay, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Marilyn and get to know her a little bit more. Okay, so Marilyn, maybe you can explain to us and share with us uh, why do you do what you do? Why the company? And um, tell us about your journey generally. Yay. Thank you so much, Murshida, for having me here. I'm super excited. And of course, good afternoon to everyone, at least from Asia. And again, good morning or good evening for those who are listening in other time zones, right? And um, yeah, to introduce um, myself or why we do what we do, right, in customized training solutions, I would um, probably cover um, three points. But the first one would be mainly on my experience to share with them to have a better understanding on why I actually started um, customized training solutions. Um, although I had the privilege of working um, with great leaders, um, amazing leaders who are now my friends, uh, but of course um, a lot of the things that we possibly do or we wanted to change are those things that you know are negative based on our experience right so i had quite a number of negative experiences um, from some leaders and perhaps i could highlight um, um what happened to me 20 years ago where you know i found myself kind of clueless on what i want to do next because i love what i'm doing i was a room sales manager in a hotel and in fact it's a like a um, it's part of a big group of hotels I would say. Um, and I'm earning more than I need because I'm single and I'm the, the top producer. In fact, I'm actually friends with a paymaster and he would always say, you're too much, Maryland. He would always say that to me. And I said, what? What did I do wrong? And then he would say like, you're earning more than your boss, you know? <laughs> so that's why I was really enjoying it. And I'm, you know, on top of um, my 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 career, um, and I was really young then. I was like, what twenty in my twenties, early twenties. However, every time that you know I'm doing a lot of things, I'm super busy, and you know I get a lot of commendations as well. However, my momentum usually gets disrupted because my boss makes unnecessary comments or actions um, that you know. It's like not right. Like, you know, if I have to give an example, for example, she would say that, oh, I don't think Marilyn will get married at all <laughs> in a meeting, in a group meeting. Huh? And or something that, um, you know, she would say that if, if I go home on time, like 6 p.m., she would like say like, oh, you're on half day today. <laughs> So the culture is really not so good. Um, I would normally go home around 10 p.m., 12 midnight, or even 1 in the morning uh, from starting working at 9 a.m. So um, from that experience, I realized that, you know, what they said, I mean, we, we've heard it so many times that, you know, um, great employees actually leave due to bad bosses, right? I'm sorry to say that, but it happens. I mean, it happens to, we, we experience that. So um, I believe that, you know, as a leader, uh, we drive a lot of um, our business, our the direction. And of course, we work with people. <laughs> and that is important We are that, you know, leaders are well-trained. And then 15 years ago, having the same passion, dedication at work, um, you know, despite of, again, the commendations, we still get complaints. And I would say that it has a lot to do with the poor mindset, as well as lack of training of some employees as well. Um, I was an events manager then. And then when I moved here in Singapore 10 years ago, 
I was so blessed to, you know, get exposed um, or got exposed with training both as an organizer and as an attendee as well. And I get to speak with, you know, several leaders from big companies around the globe. And I have noticed, um, you know, that there are relevant interventions that can actually bridge competency, um, you know, improve mindset, behaviors, um, and of course, therefore, it creates more effective and efficient outcomes. And we, we know that exactly. I mean, we both are so addicted to investing in ourselves, right? We are in the same mentorship program. And um, so during that time, I actually discovered like, you know, um, but there's also still a major problem in terms of how um, people are actually addressing <laughs> some of these um, gaps, right? Um, from, from when I started my business, you know, some of them like, oh, how, how come we've actually, you know, run that program or we've, we've already attended that program and yet nothing is happening or we're not getting any results, right? And, uh, you know, um, and I've, I found out that the reason that's, the reason why they're not able to address it is that, um, first of all, they can't articulate what they need. They even, they even don't know what the basics, I mean, like, what's the problem, what's the pain or challenges that they are facing. They don't really get into the root cause of the problem. And they, always think that, you know, or opt for quick fixes, I would say, like, you know, canned programs or like, oh, I think half day, one day, one hour <laughs> will be enough. And again, like what I would usually, you know, joke with <laughs> some of my clients, you know, um, training is like taking a bath. You don't take a bath now and you expect to be smelling good in a one in a in a month time, right? Maybe in a week time, you're already so smelly, right? So that's the same with uh with training. I mean, yeah, and so that is really um, you know, that's exactly why I decided to dedicate my life uh with uh customized training solutions or CTS, um, to be able to create an impact to others, to, to my community. And I would say that this is a big word um, that, you know, I wanted to make a difference in the world. And I believe it's possible because, um, you know, um, when we get to help others, leaders, um, especially leaders, I would say, um, to have that shift of uh, mindset, um, then we get to have a better world, right? Because when you are better, you're thinking um, in a better way and all those stuff, your mindset, your, your behavior is be better Then you. It affects you as a leader in your family, in your community, and therefore in the world. And so my second point, point is just to summarize, like, you know, what I've learned in the last um, 20 over years is that I believe that I found my ikigai <laughs> with what I do right now. And uh, for those who doesn't understand or doesn't know ikigai, uh, what ikigai means, it's basically I'm combining what I love to do, what I am good at, and at the same time, what I can be paid for and what the world needs from me. <laughs> so it's basically living my purpose, right? And so, um, and, and definitely this is, I would say myself, I mean, my myself, uh, self um, uh, goal, I, I would say, is that I wanted to leave a legacy um, so that others, especially my children, I do have children, um, by, you know, improving myself so I can be a good role model for them as well. That's my selfish, <laughs> um, <laughs> my selfish uh, reason why I'm doing this business as well. Wow, that is so amazing. And you know, it's exactly why um, entrepreneurs like yourself get inspired to start doing what they do because of a problem that you see. There was that missing link that was exactly. not addressed. And mm -hmm. you said, nobody's doing this. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And that is what uh, an, an entrepreneurial, uh, uh, enterprising person does mm -hmm. when they see a problem. And then they say, oh, I, I want to create that solution. Mm -hmm. And you are more than and above just a problem and a solution. You also have that legacy that you want to leave uh, an, an impact behind in this world and also for your children. How many children do you have? I have three. I have a teenager. 
uh, just turned 15 recently. I have a four-year-old and I have a one-year-old. I covered all the, <laughs> I covered all the um, critical stages of motherhood all at the same time while doing my business. Teenagers thought that. Yeah, isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, everybody clap for Marilyn. And you see, it's no excuse that uh, um, a mom... Uh, with children, small children, like a baby, it's like still running a business and it's also a B2B business. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about more about this because I think Mar Marilyn has also expanded beyond just B2B and she is also going into B2C as well. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to the solution that you are providing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And can you share with us what specifically you are helping people with and mm -hmm. what particular problem are you solving? Mm -hmm. So we actually started more towards um, technical programs in the past where I have worked with a lot of oil and gas companies like Petrona, Shell, Chevron. Um, and because the reason why I thought it's like a great entry for me is because like people are already looking for it and companies are prioritizing technical needs. But then more and more while I'm working with them, even I'm giving them like a lot of um, results um, out of the training programs that we run. And even though I get, you know, positive feedbacks, te um, testimonials and all those stuff, I still feel that there's something missing. Um, and at the same time, I would always say that, um, you know, um, what I hear in my past um, uh, organizations I work with is that, Okay, they are providing um, training and all the stuff, but they're not able to, you know, customize it the way we do it in, in CTS, right? So that gave us more opportunity to actually like, um, you know, fill that particular gap, as, as you say earlier. And um, now from usual, you know, training, um, we actually wanted to really move towards consulting. Um, I had I have actually one of my consultants working with me, and he keeps on telling me, "Don't waste your time with training." And he keep on pushing pushing me during that time. And I said, "But I don't understand. I don't know what to do with with consulting uh, back then." And then I realized, in fact, I'm already doing consulting. Is that I'm just doing it. A lot of times for free <laughs> unfortunately so but then i mean fortunately and unfortunately but i mean it's i guess a, a learning journey that i have to take so i mean the, the reason why i said that we wanted to move to consulting is that because we wanted to create more opportunities to create more sustainable outcomes um, because i believe that Yes, training is very important. Learning is very important. But it's not, it doesn't have to be limited to that, right? Because um, my challenge as an external partner is that, you know, we don't really get to measure, monitor, and um, give that um, sustainability uh, portion to them if we just do or just run a short training program. So we wanted to have more, you know, interventions because a lot of times, okay, in the training, they would have the know-how or knowledge. But then the challenge is that the reason why it's not that effective because they don't implement it. <laughs> And, and so there has to be uh, sometimes a hand, hand holding, I would say, where, you know, um, we as an external partner can still have the chance to monitor it, to measure the effect, effectiveness of the program and co-create it. Um, th that's, I, I believe, the most important part is co-create and customize the program based on their priori priorities, their needs and their goals. And with consulting, we can easily, you know, create a more holistic, dynamic, transformational solutions, I would say. And, um, you know, and part of that will be solving problems like mindset, heart set, on top of the usual skills and um, functional um, or core functional um, skills that they have to know. And, you know, and to have that culture of learning and continuous improvement within the organization. Oh, wonderful. I love that because, you know, uh, sometimes people say, oh, what training is good? What training is good? And it's like, yes, all trainings are good. That that two days or one day or laser sharp three hours of training or talk, right? But how much is it that people really absorb and put it into practice? I would exactly. say very, very low percentage. 
It's mm-hmm. that consulting, that follow up, that guidance. I think that mm-hmm. is exactly what uh, will make it sustainable. And yeah, I I I'm, I so agree with that. And um, who would best um, benefit from this, um, Marilyn? Who are you serving? Um, we are serving leaders who are, I would say, continuous learners and action takers. And of course, since we started with leaders from multinational companies and conglomerates, so that's basically our main, um, you know, um, client base. Um, and uh, but of course, during the pandemic, we also had the chance and um, the opportunity to be able to serve, um, you know, um, some entrepreneurs as well as small and medium enterprise leaders in the organization. But the focus for our, like for example, our um, leadership and organizational development package, right? Um, I would say the top uh, leaders. Um, meaning high potential or empowered leaders. And the second one would be the senior managers who are actually working on um, um, department uh, based since there are people or even leaders that are under them. And of course, the C levels, because a lot of the directions and the, you know, the business is being driven by them. So um, if you focus on that or on those levels, then it will be easier to actually um, uh, bring it through towards the entire organization, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I always believe culture comes from the top down. And if it doesn't come from the top down, it's uh, and, and if the leadership is not uh, conscious or not good, a good leadership, sure. right? Then mm-hmm. there will be revolution, right? When the, the when exactly. change is starting from the bottom up, uh, that is revolution. So it has to be from yes. the top down for it to be healthy. So mm-hmm. um, how do you help them? So we help them transform and thrive, like what I've mentioned usually in my introduction, um, that you know, um, in five uh, piece, I would say. So because sometimes they would say you have to, you can't specialize in just one thing. I mean, you can't specialize in everything. You have to specialize in just one thing. But then, um, to be able to really have that, you know, holistic dynamic and uh, transformational, like I've mentioned that I wanted organizations to have, you can't just have one program to address everything, right? <laughs> it's impossible. But then the good thing is because I am so blessed that I have a lot of world-class resources or experts that I have worked I, I work with in my pool. So they are still specialized based on their experience, their industry, and um, what they do best. However, what we do is we combine them to be able to address all the five Ps, which are the people, the process, performance, productivity, and of course, profitability is the end result of all those, right? Um, so, and it has to be co-created because there has to be an ownership from those companies that we will work with. Because again, that's the reason why um, the the results, you're missing out on the results or you're not getting results because you're not implementing it or you're not, um, you know, you don't take ownership to this. So there has to be an alignment um, there um, in terms of how we actually run the program. And um, that's how we can help leaders, in fact. So, you know, um, there has to be um, empowerment for leaders. There has to be organizational alignment. There has to be, um, they have to learn how to be more adaptive and flexible. And lastly, of course, to be able to drive that those outcomes. Wow, amazing. And uh, I, I love what you said. It's actually, they have to take responsibility for the learning, right? In a nutshell, exactly. they have to take responsibility. <laughs> it's not about, oh, this thing doesn't work and all that, but are you taking responsibility mm-hmm. for the learning and the knowledge that that you you have um and yeah and, and it's i i love that topic that you you do and you call it you know transformational leadership because um that's what leaders have to do now to be sustainable exactly. especially in this world that we have transformed into also mm-hmm. so they have to be transformational as well and so how do people get connected with you uh, Marilyn? Um, there are, you, are you? several ways. If I may um, actually share my presentation so they can have a better understanding or on what I mean by the um, 
and how how we actually go through that process of um you know transforming their leaders to create their future ready teams if i can share that um that will be great it's just um a minute um and 45 seconds can i share my screen yes you can you can already oh, okay. yeah Okay, can you see my screen now? Okay, yes. so yeah, this is basically the transformational leadership package that I was referring to. And of course, we have to, we, we have said that 38% of CEOs are actually uh, believe that the issues are coming from the, um, oops, it's it's way too fast. Let me, let me just stop it a bit, pause it a bit. So this is what we meant by the uh, four um, pillars of uh, future ready teams. Um, so they have to, there has to be an empowered leader, organizational alignment, um, adaptability and agility, and driving outcomes as well. Um, and this is how, these are the key to growth as we, you know, if, if we have to identify it, of course, the right people, company culture, strategic plans, customer centricity, and um, exec execution excellence. Because I think um, a lot of the um, problems as well are being able to execute or implement the strategic plans that they have uh, done <laughs> uh, beforehand. So... Um, and then this is the core development programs that we are looking into is starting from the mindset and heart set because if the mindset and heart set is not prepared, it's kind of difficult to shift or to um, train them on the rest of the um, skills. So there's leadership skills and of course the core functional as well as continuous learning. So these are the, I, I, I've actually paused um, the at the I, I'll be pausing probably five six uh, uh, parts. So this is what we meant by the level levels of leaders that we would like to um, focus on: um, engage leaders, leading the function, and leading the organization. So these are the top executives, um, and we've already you know discussed earlier what does it mean. And then so um, to give more example in terms of the mindset and heart set, this is um, where they can, you know, find that um, mindset, heart set. Um, the leadership skills, core functional, and then the example of some of the programs that's part of it. Yes. And then this is the process that we're going through um, to help them. So from the problem, what's their willing to, uh, their current state, their commitment on, you know, what are they willing to invest? And when we say investment, of course, um, it's not only money, but also the time that they're willing to, um, you know, to spend, um, to be able to have that culture that they would want to have, right? Or that the transformation they want to have. And of course, of course, the development and delivery of the program, execution, and then monitoring to measure what, to, to monitor, to integrate, to optimize that in their current uh, functions. And lastly, of course, um, we wouldn't say that at the start, it might be, you know, everything perfect. We have to, might be able to, you know, need to review and refine that again, right? So basically, um, and what makes us different or this program unique um, is that, of course, like I've mentioned, we have a diverse expert um, with proven, um, you know, track records, and they have proven uh, methodologies, uh, as well as techniques. Um, and of course, they've proven themselves because of the track records that they have. Um, and then, um, of course, the transformational and the techniques as well. Um, when we say transformational, of course, it um, we're looking into different because you know people has to have that balance and humans has to have that um, integration in their life, right? And um, we have to make that or take that into consideration. And of course, customer centricity. I've made mention to you. I am um, like a hotelier by training and profession, and I work with like some of the biggest names in terms of the. Um, and so it's like bringing bringing that uh, five star or <laughs> luxury hotel experience to training or consulting. And then of course we wanted it to be practical, co-created, and customized. Um, to make sure it 
you know, works well. And the rest is just, you know, um, testimonials we have received from satisfied customers that we have worked with in trainings and summits. Um, and most of them are customized program with a few, you know, public runs and some samples of um, case studies like this one um, for um, long term consulting projects uh, with, you know, big names, you would see that, that there are big names here, Cargill. Um, uh, Philips and all. And these are some of the experts that we are working with um, to help us uh, deliver those programs um, or those um, coaching um, sessions to ensure that it's going to work for the customers or um, there will be changes that's going to happen in there, right? So, and this is your final question where they can reach us. <laughs> so I guess I would want to flash this. Um, they can actually uh, reach us at 6524-4973 or email us at inquiries at citysolutionsglobal.com. And if you'd like to see um, and find out more details about the leadership and OD package, um, the, they can see the link from the screen as well as if they would like to you know schedule a free consulting call with us um, they can schedule it um, through um, our um, our website as well under contact us great leave that on for a while yeah as we um, just have a, I just want to do a little short um, um, feedback from what I saw just now your clients are from mostly across Asia. I saw the different testimonials from different countries. Huh? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Where are they normally right. from? Um, a lot of my customers, I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously I'm a Filipino, so I do have a lot of clients um, from Philippines and then um, Malaysia and of course Singapore since I'm based here. But we had um, the opportunity to serve over, um, you know, 3,000 leaders from 30 different countries in the past because of the um, COVID-19, it has actually increased tremendously. We were able to have like attendees from our for our master classes coming from Europe, from US, from other countries um, globally. So yes, it's a dream come true because um, what we wanted as our, our vision is to be one of the leading, um, you know, provider solutions provider um, globally. Yeah. <laughs> so um, through, through um, you know, these virtual sessions, we were able to have that opportunity to serve uh, more countries in different um, parts of the world, even in Africa and all those stuff, which we um, haven't really had the chance to do um, some of our projects or most of our projects, I would say is around Southeast Asian region, although we've done one in China, um, I think two, three years ago. Yeah, and the attendees, and I, I'm also lucky that I work a lot with the holdings company. <laughs> Yeah. So normally we would have like um, participants coming from different, like what you see here in the photo, mm -hmm. these are people coming from Australia, from Japan, from Vietnam, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, etc. So like in one, you know, in one run of our program, we like cover like maybe seven countries or so, <laughs> or seven companies or so uh, for, for other runs. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. I love this. And you know, that's, that's exactly what I agree with you, what you said during this pandemic, we are actually, uh, it's borderless, right? Right now, it's like you don't, True. yeah, and, and, and training is like um, consulting, I would say, I think consulting yeah. would be very, very necessary, especially now, where organizations do need to transit from 2019 to now and beyond. There's a lot of you know culture, uh, culture change, management, yes. cultural change that needs to be done, leadership that comes in, uh, and also the kind of um, transformational leadership. Not you can't lead the same way as before as well, right? Mm -hmm. So these are all very relevant topics that you are you are lead, uh, you are doing. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, we can can you? Uh, I think can, can you close this? Are you okay with this? Uh, yes. Sharon? All right. I want to talk about you now on um, your other things as well. Besides, um, you saw also an opportunity besides corporations. You mm -hmm. also saw, you've also seen another group of people who would definitely benefit from your knowledge and your experience. Right. Tell me more about that. 
Ah uh, yes, because of this pandemic, um, it opened up uh, some opportunities for us to organize some stuff. And um, you know, you're also my coach, and uh, we've been working together, and we've actually realized a lot of things. You know, to be more creative in terms of reaching out and helping more people, right? And so, um, because I've always been inclined to um, you know, women empowerment, um, kind of stuff, and um. And you've said like, oh, Mary Lynn, you're so amazing with, you know, what you've been doing with all these um, events, with all this. In fact, I've been actually creating visibility for the trainers, consultants, and coaches that I, I have. It's just that I'm doing it for free. <laughs> so um, like what my passion project is on top of the, you know, leadership and organization organizational development package I just shared this to be able to help entrepreneurs, small and medium owners, and probably still the trainers and consultants, coaches, especially mothers who would like to, you know, um, have their business uh, or do their business or work from home and all those stuff, right? So that, you know, I can help them on how, what, what can they do to be known or to be, to get attention and, you know, to, to help other people because um you know i've i've been working with a lot of amazing um co consultants trainers coaches i would say but they don't know how to sell themselves <laughs> they don't know how to market themselves and they're too amazing you know and i guess that's the reason why i was i i don't hesitate to help them i mean in terms of like you know selling them because um I, I see their passion, I see their worth, I see how amazing they are, and, you know, I don't want to put it into waste, so, um, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, an SME owner, or if you're a trainer, consultant, coaches, who would like to increase your visibility and know how to, you know, market yourself and be able to reach out to more people to um, give your message to them, feel free to you know, get in touch with us, to me, um, connect with me. Um, we've actually shared a few. Um, I am not sure if you have my links um, or later we can probably share with them. We have our YouTube uh, channel. We have our Facebook page. We I have my LinkedIn profile as well or our LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn uh, CTS page. So, you know, you can, um, we will share that uh, later on so that you can get in touch with us to find out how we can help you yeah absolutely we have we have the links we'll put it in the comments and also in the youtube and also at the exhibition booth uh, at the at the comments page um we'll put that on there <laughs> yeah so this is um yeah this is great this is great and you know you're an example of a of a mother uh with three children who <laughs> can create projects during the pandemic and um yeah during that pandemic there was transition in how organizations are running and all that and yet you were still visible and that's where you your message is out there and like we like you you mentioned also i so agree there's so many intelligent wise people but they are the internet's best kept secret nobody knows them <laughs> exactly. right yeah so so it is a shame that their wisdom is not is not shared with the rest mm -hmm. of the world so yeah get in touch with Marilyn. Marilyn will be able to assist you also to get your message out there through events and and programs that she can support you with as well mm -hmm. so with that thank you so much Marilyn. do you have hey. any anything else you want to share any last words for the audience um i guess it's just about um remembering that you know um to invest in yourself for everyone because um that's something that you can't take away uh that nobody can take away from you i would say and uh, there's always a return of investment when you learn something and don't be afraid to make mistakes to have that failure because from those mistakes or you know, uh, bad experiences that you have, like what I've shared in my story with my uh, ex bad experiences with leaders. I mean, that pushed me to like, oh, okay, this is something I would like to, you know, do and, you know, earn from, <laughs> right? And, um, you know, and you're probably it's, making more than what the first your your the last person was doing to you right yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean like when you're in business um you know there's more opportunities as well like i mean um like what you've shared um and i've shared earlier that i have like 
three children and you know been doing the business working from home for the last seven years um, working remotely even before COVID so that's possible right but you have to start from somewhere so I just you know I just wanted to inspire more people or especially mothers to um, you know to speak up to get your message out and you know imagine if you can inspire just one person or change the other like one person's life i think that's already enough right yeah it is it's it is it is yes thank you so much maryland and so grateful to have your sharing so everybody will be posting maryland's contacts uh, in the comments and in the chat so uh, do look out for her and do look at the programs that she runs and if you know anyone who would also uh, be looking to be more visible and get their message out there, um, do connect directly with Maryland. Okay, so thank you so much, Maryland. Thank you so much, Rashida, and thank you for those who are actually watching our uh, uh, interview. Thank you.